What's up everyone? Brian Peterson here again with another episode in our how-to series. We're still talking animation, but today we're talking modeling and texturing. We're gonna be meeting Tim. He's our full sale instructor and industry expert, along with Mariana. She's from our Eggbox team. Let's go check out what they got for us. Hey Tim. How's it going? How you doing, man? Good. Dude, so we're talking modeling today. So uh, modeling inside of film and video games and television is actually creating the model of the character or the prop that's gonna be used. So we have to do that inside of 3D space. A long time ago, we do it out of clay or something like that, but now we're gonna use software. So what's some software that you can get into that you would actually use for modeling? Predominantly, you'll have a main package, something right. like uh, Maya or 3D Studio mm -hmm. Max. Okay. Um, and then you'll use other packages to help you along, something like uh, ZBrush or Mudbox, where you can do uh, some sculpting of high-res characters. Well, modeling always starts with uh, your pre-production. So you're gonna get some sketches from the art team. So your art team spent a lot of time developing that character, coming up with the proportions, the shape, and you wanna make sure you get that right. I like to start making a cylinder for every part. Mm -hmm. The legs, the arms, the body. This is the concept art they gave us. Um, usually we use the front, both side and back. So I've been using that to match the character. And then we have the side pose. I like using the see-through to use the for the concept. And then we put it like that. And then we match it. Here, the concept art is like um, in A pose. But we usually use it in T pose. So now we have our simplistic design. How do we start refining it? So now that I have the character kind of blocked out inside of Maya, I'd start pushing further and further into the shapes. So if we're looking at something like the face, I'd start with the simple shape of the eyes, let's say. And eventually you'd want to start going into where the creases and the folds are to refine it, make it look more realistic or more along the lines of what the reference looked like. So as a modeler, how are you handing this off to the animator to show that these are where the moving parts are going to be? Well, before would even go to animator, sure. we kind of have to think about what movements are going to be made by the character. So if we're looking at something like the face, we're going to take into consideration the direction the topology flows. It's also known as edge flow or your wireframe. And we're going to want to make sure that the, the edges or the wires are going in a very particular direction so it can be animated. Because as our face squashes and stretches, there's going to be certain details that actually come into view. So if you think about your smile line, mm -hmm. when we're just sitting here and, and just kind of talking, you don't see much movement through here but as soon as I smile or right. start talking you're gonna start to see that so if I don't have certain edge flow or the edge is going the right direction to begin with when it gets handed off to the rigging department to get ready for animation they're not gonna be able to help develop or bring out those shapes so why don't you tell us a little bit about your process in Maya well I think it's way easier when you already have the shapes when you put it in Maya you just have to remodel everything but uh, polygon by polygon so you would do the topology one way pass it off to the rigger they tested it mm -hmm. and then they give you back some feedback and you make the changes. Yeah. Nice. What we had a lot of problem, it's the mouth. So usually I always model it closed, but here the mouth is a separate mesh. So when the anime, when the character talks, you won't be moving those polygons. Mm -hmm. It's a different mesh. Okay. And then the eyelashes too. We had them painted first, but then it looked lame. Uh -huh. So we had to do the eyelashes as a separate mesh. Okay. As you can see, the topology is the same okay. for Nina. Is that to help out the rigors? Yes, of course. All right, so our next step, texturing. Yeah. Tim, what is texturing? So texturing is a way that we can put uh, additional color information and even sometimes details on the model. So texturing is a whole new process. It's complicated because you have to unwrap the character and use as much space as you can in the UV space. So to start putting textures on your character, you're going to have to start by laying out your UVs. The UVs are just a coordinate system that follows the topology that we created when we modeled it. Think of if I had one dot on my arm right here, it would know that the color pixels or texture would belong to that dot. So we would lay that out flat, uh, similar to like a bearskin rug. So if you've ever seen that in front of a fire, uh, <laughs> the bear has to be unwrapped somewhere. Gotcha. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing with our characters. Another way to think about it is if you look at your own clothing, right? Anywhere you have a seam is gonna be how you can unwrap your clothing and apply a texture to it. Every surface has a certain look to it. 
and that's going to be broken up between your color maps, bump maps, and each one of those is going to describe how the surface looks. Once we understand the material and what we want the surface to look like, then we can go in and start painting the texture maps. We don't see it really, but the skin has so much color. So we have blue, we have yellow, we have red. So you have to look at a lot of references skin to kind yeah. of figure out what you wanted to use and how to simplify it a bit. Mm -hmm. The reference is really thick, but we have to make it cartoony. So the cheeks are more red than real life. And here you can see the other maps. So with the texture maps, uh, there are going to be several maps that drive what the material actually looks like. So you're going to have a color map that should contain no lighting information in it. So you don't want anything like shadows or highlights. You just want pure color information. So something like my shirt, it would just be the stripes and the pink, but I wouldn't want the little ridges in there that make up the actual texture of the fabric or the stitches for the seams. Something like that's going to come more from the, the bump map. So your bump map's going to get those little details that would be too expensive to model or take too long to do, and you can more quickly uh, paint them inside a package like Photoshop or Substance Painter. We're also going to want to think of how our highlights are handled. Um, highlights are just reflected light, uh, so you have kind of two things to consider with that. Uh, you have the shape of the highlight, which is going to come from the roughness mostly. Uh, so if you have a rough material like this cloth, <clears throat> it's going to be a more open highlight than if you have something like metal that has a very tight highlight on it. It's going to be a less rough surface. Uh, one of the more complex things to think about when you're texturing is all of that has to come together. And we're not really trained to break that apart when we first look at something. So knowing what a reflected highlight should look like and what maps you have to paint to get that. So you showed us a couple maps that you painted inside a substance. Yeah. Could you maybe show us how you put them into the material? Of course. Here you have to paint all the details, how it's going to look. The material here in this jacket is different from the shirt. That's the bump map. So you only use the maps that you need to bring out the details and the textures. Yeah, that's how we make the clothes. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And if you want to learn about degrees here at Full Sail University, be sure to visit fullsail.edu. And if you also want to learn about Eggbots, be sure to check out FF Miners Entertainment linked in the description below.